<laughs> okay, um, so uh, look around you and see how many things are not in straight lines, right? So the things that are not in straight lines um, need to be explained using calculus because the methods of algebra before calculus will not let you explain how, you know, how does this, this desk looks like a you know, rectangle, right? But obviously it's not because the, the corners are curved. So to find the area, you're going to need calculus to find the area of the desk. Um, OK, so the first, um, the first uh, thing I'm talking to you about first is the uh, application um, using motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so the first thing I'm talking about is um, motion. So, you know, if I, if I have like a car moving, right, and you tell me your position at every um, certain strategic points, right, we can find out from just the position, we can find out the velocity and the acceleration, as well as the jerk, which is um, jerk refers to when you stop, and then, you know, you're, you're moving and then you stop, so you can jerk forward. So we can find out um, how much you jerk forward when you stop. It changes in acceleration, right? Um, so, you know, and then the second one, second one is, is um, the one application of uh, area, right? So like I mentioned, you know, the, the area of this desk is not perfect rectangle. So we're going to need calculus to find, you know, how the, the, cur the curve here, you know, we need to find um, the area of it is not perfect, you know, right angle. Um, to find the surface area of this phone, you know, we need we need calculus, right? Because it's um, curved, right? So the way a lot of things in the world are. Um, and then the third one is very closely related is volume, right? So there, you know, there's different uh, ways to find volume. We have uh, obviously you can do this one, right? Because somebody took geometry, so it's just a cylinder. Um, but the formula for the cylinder does come from calculus. Um, sphere, same one. Uh, if you take the cross sections, because they're circles, you find the area of the circle, and then you take the height of the uh, sphere, and then you multiply it, right? You'll be able, because as you know, the area is just length times width times height, which is it's the same thing applies except that it's circular. Um, and then have the water bottle, right? So, you know, this is obviously not a perfect cylinder because we have, you know, this area here that is smaller than the rest, but we can still find it using calculus. And then the other one is, um, so we have banana here. So um, the cross sections are, again, circles. So we can find the volume of this if we find the area of each one of the cross sections, which we can do uh, if we say this is the, the area between two functions on the graph. Um, so obviously, the world around us would be very, very different if calculus had not been formalized by Leibniz and Newton in the 1700s, because um, you know, think about history, think about when the Industrial Revolution came about. So the Industrial Revolution came about at the end of the 1700s. So that was actually caused by the formalization of calculus. Uh, I say formalized because in math we don't really invent or discover things. We just, people have ideas but they don't, they don't know exactly what, what they mean. So then formalized means you just turn it into a textbook, right? It means you can go ahead and research it and that um, you know, somebody wrote something down and it's there, right? It's like a law, right? So, you know, for many years people have laws but they don't write them down. So until somebody write, writes them down, you know, we can uh, go in there and research it and then more people can advance uh, the, the calculus and more people can, can create more contributions to this. So, um, you know, around us, not many things are in straight lines. So we might as well learn about them and how they have changed the world in which we live in. Thank you.